Hello, my name is Tess Greinock, and I'm a research data and scholarly communications librarian at the Lamar Studio Library here at UMass Chan Medical School. And we will be spending the next hour exploring the magical data cleaning properties of WinRefine and how to automate them. To be more specific, by the end of today, I hope you will be able to understand what OpenRefine is, explain uh, and demonstrate how to clean data in OpenRefine, and demonstrate how to automate a data cleaning workflow in OpenRefine. So, I have a quick poll here that Lisa is going to put up. Uh, just asking you if you've used OpenRefine before and if you've downloaded OpenRefine. All right, and I see that most people have not used OpenRefine before, which is great because you are going to learn how to use it uh, in this session, or at least get you on your way to be able to use it in your projects. And looks like some people have already downloaded it or in the process of downloading it right now. So if you, uh, uh, Lisa, if you don't mind going, I'm ending the poll and showing the results. Awesome. Sorry, I believe what I was saying uh, and go ahead and stop the share. Thanks so much, Lisa. Um, and, uh, but if you are in process of downloading it, hopefully this will go smoothly. Uh, but you, if you do run into any issues or questions, please put them in the chat and we're here to help you. Uh, the basic instructions are to go to the openrefine.org download link and then choose one of the kits. Uh, if you're on Windows, you'll want the Windows kit with embedded Java, Mac, it's a Mac kit, uh, and then Linux uh, is a Linux kit, but you will also need to download Java. And the messy data that we're gonna be using today, uh, Lisa's gonna put that link in the chat again. And so uh, as, uh, we were mentioning earlier uh, to save this data on to somewhere that you will remember it or use during this workshop. You'll want to, when you get to that the link, you'll want to right click save as if you're using Chrome or Firefox or Safari, right click download link file. There might also be a download button in the top right hand corner if you're using Chrome. I will add to, um, I had a question about Safari and the download button on my Safari. It um, is in the right corner of the uh, menu bar when you pull it up in Safari. So not like in where the link is, but over to the right, there's a download button. Awesome, thanks Lisa. Yeah. Can we um, attach the file in any way? Tess in Zoom? Uh, unfortunately, not in this uh, meeting, I believe. Yes, and it is a CSV file to confirm what um, a message that I got. Thanks. Any other troubleshooting or questions about uh, downloading the file? Just give me one sec, Tess. I'm going to send it via um, email. Email. To okay. You. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. I have a little bit more uh, while people are downloading that. I have a little bit of an explanation about what OpenRefine is, and before we get into the actually working with the data. So, uh, while you're busy downloading and Lisa sending that email, I'll just go a little bit of an. Ex explanation about what OpenRefine is. Uh, it's a desktop application that uses your web browser as yeah. a graphical user interface, and it's described as a power tool for working with messy data. But what does this mean? Well, it's a free and open source software that runs on your desktop that means that your data is kept private and that your files are saved locally and that no internet connect connection is needed. 
Uh, it's point and click with an optional coding add-ons and it keeps track of your work so it is reproducible. And saving happens automatically to ensure that OpenRefine shuts down properly you, uh, to ensure lists. And you're not modifying uh, original or raw data. So that's the advantage of having it uh, being a local uh, software as opposed to being held in the cloud. And uh, even though using your browser window like that you would use to search the internet, it's actually not transmitting that data uh, over the internet at all. And how can you use OpenRefine? So you can use it to get an overview of your data set. Uh, and it's most useful for data in a tabular format, such as a spreadsheet or common separated value file or CSV or a tab delimited file such as TSV, but with internal inconsistencies in formatting, spelling, or terminology. And OpenRefine can be used to standardize and clean data across your file. And, uh, and to answer the question, uh, yes, I believe it would be HIPAA compliant because that data is not leaving uh, the secure storage of the computer or terminal that you're working on. Um, but uh, it would depend on the environment that your, your data is stored. Uh, and uh, as getting back to what it can be used for, it can enhance a data set with data from other sources. And more specifically, it can also modify large groups of statistics, compile and clean up research data from surveys or other projects, and sort and refine data automatically generated by research instruments. All right, so uh, just a quick check here uh, to make sure everybody has downloaded the data. If you see the uh, reactions in the bottom of your, in your Zoom menu, if you could hit the uh, thumbs up or a green check mark to let me know that you're all good to go for the, with the data downloaded. All right, looks like we're all good to go. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna switch to OpenRefine itself. So when you are first opening OpenRefine, and I will preface this that I am on a PC and, uh, and I'm gonna be using Chrome as my browser and we are using 3.5.2 as the version number for OpenRefine, which is the most recent stable version. And when you first uh, want to go and open it, it doesn't show up in your programs list uh, for our PCs. It's gonna be in the folder where you have it uh, saved. So I moved mine over from my downloads into my documents and I went into the folder and you're going to want to double click this open refine application uh, item. And it's going to open a, a command line window that looks like this. And so that's just running in the background, but where you're going to do all of your work and all your changes are going to be in your browser window of your preference. And it's gonna choose your browser based on your, um, uh, the browser it uses based on your preferred browser set for your uh, library. Uh, and yes, uh, Lisa's put in the chat that for Mac, it's in your applications folder uh, and you just double click and open it. And when you first arrive uh, to OpenRefine, you're gonna get this screen. And this is where you will import your data. There's many different options that you have for importing the data from uh, TSV, CSV, Excel documents, Google data, uh, even from the web. You can also, uh, if somebody else has already started cleaning the data in OpenRefine, you can import their project uh, they have sent to you as a tar or a tar.gz uh, file. Or if you've already started working on a project, you can open a past project uh, from, your, from the open project uh, tab. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a new project. So for this project, you're gonna wanna go choose files, find where you stored the file that we're gonna be using for this session. So maybe that's on your desktop or somewhere in your documents. I have it stored in my information for this class and then open. And then once you have that file, click next. 
and it should populate here. And so at this time, you can change the name of the project. So I'm just going to change this to Open Refine uh, Demo, but you can change it to however, whichever name uh, is most memorable for you. And at this point, you're going to want to check that your data is coming through how you would expect it to be. So uh, uh, the columns are maybe some of the data is a little bit messy, which is what why we're using Open Refine, but that the columns are appearing in the correct location, uh, that uh, it's selected the correct uh, separator for your uh, file types. So in this case, we're using a CSV, so commas is correct. And you can choose, for example, some survey instruments uh, have two lines as column headers. Uh, so you can choose if you want to change this from one to two uh, for the column headers, as well as uh, if there's any special characters that you want to um, uh, enclosed cells containing column separators, or if there's uh, if you want to ignore certain rows in your data. And there are many other options uh, that you can choose at this point as well, as well as adding tags. So everything should be good to go. Uh, and if once you're happy with your project name, go ahead and create project. And if, um, quick show of hands, is this, does, would anybody like me to increase the size of my, of my uh, screen? Is the text large enough? You could just type in the chat if it needs to be larger or if it's good to go. All right, I'm gonna make it slightly larger just so that, there you go. So it'll make it easier for the demonstration. All right, so uh, now that you've come to your, uh, this is where you're gonna be doing all your work in OpenRefine. So just to give you a little bit of a lay of the land in terms of uh, how things are organized in OpenRefine, each row usually represents a record in the data. And so you'll see here that we have the option to toggle between rows and records. And currently they are the same. And uh, OpenRefine displays a limited number of rows. So currently we're just showing 10 rows, but I do have the option to increase the number of rows to 25 up to a thousand rows. And so you can see here, I only have 10. Uh, and this means that you're only seeing a sample of the, of the entire data. And to go to the next page, you have the next and last pages, or you can choose a particular page you want to go to uh, on the top right here. Now, when it comes to OpenRefine and how you are going to be manipulating the data, most of the options are available through the top of the column headers. So in these drop-down menus here are going to be all the options that we're going to be exploring today with how we're going to be editing cells, editing columns, and sorting uh, and viewing our data. Now, uh, I just said that each row usually represents a record in the data. And right now that is true. But say I have multiple values in a cell, such as this multiple authors column, I can separate the values in that cell by clicking the drop down menu for the authors column. So to do that, we're going to go into our menu for the authors column and then edit cells and then split multi valued cells. And we're going to be choosing our separator and it's automatically put in that it's the pipe. And then, and if it doesn't have it automatically, you're going to want to go ahead and add that and then press OK. And now I have it split into multi-valued cells. And you'll notice that the records has stayed the same. But how many rows are there now? So if you want to go ahead, once you've done that, to type in the chat, what, how many rows do we currently have in our OpenRefine? Okay. 
And to, as a reminder how to get back to rows, you're gonna to wanna to click on rows. So how many rows are currently uh, in the open in the spread spreadsheet once we split it by the author's column? Any guesses? That is correct, 4,009 rows. So to, to find that out, I just toggled back to rows. And so now I can see the different rows. Uh, now I'm not sure how clear it's gonna appear on your screen. I have the, um, uh, but the current filter that I have on my uh, screen, uh, I can't, the shading is not as apparent, but if you look at the shading between uh, the rows and the records, there is a slight, uh, there should be a slight difference so that you are able to better distinguish between rows and records. And you're also noticing, uh, if you can't see the shading, that the numbering does change. So here we have each row is record, uh, is numbered rather. And then when we move to records, then the numbering changes to each record. So this is really useful if you are wanting to do changes to individual parts of a multi-part cell. Uh, but say for example, now that my, I've done all my changes and I want to rejoin my cells. So to rejoin the cells, I'm gonna go to authors edit cells, join multi-valued cells, and it's gonna ask me what separator I'm gonna to wanna to use. And I'm gonna use the pipe again in this case. And the reason that I wanna use a separator that does not appear in my data uh, is so that uh, it's not separating uh, pieces of my data that I want to stay together. So for that reason, I don't wanna use common separators like commas or colons, uh, or even sometimes semicolons are not a good choice because those uh, often commonly appear in, especially in textual data. So I'm gonna use pipe and I press okay. And now it has added all that uh, multi-part cells back together and now records and rows is the same again. So one of the most useful parts of uh, open or fine for getting an overview of your data and improve consistency is facets. And a facet is a group of all the values that appear in a column and then allows you to filter the data by these values and edit values across many records at the same time. Now the simplest type of facet is called a text facet. And this simply groups all the text values in a column and lists each value with the number of records it appears in. The facet information always appears in the left-hand panel that you see here, where it says facet and filter for that tab. And uh, to create a text facet for a column, we're gonna click on the drop-down menu and we're gonna be using the publisher column in this case. So I'm gonna scroll over to publisher and then facet, text facet, and there you go, now it's appeared on our left-hand column. And the, as I mentioned, the facet uh, contains a list of values used in the data. And to filter uh, using this facet, you would click on a particular uh, publisher in this case. So I'm gonna click on this first one here. And now it has found that there's 13 matching rows and it's gonna just show those 13 matching rows. You can also, uh, if you want to add multiple items to that filter, you would click on, you can switch between them, but also include to add more publishers that we want to filter by. You can also uh, use this to uh, invert as well. So say that I am interested in all the publishers except the first three that are listed here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and invert. So now it's finding everything but these three publishers that I had selected originally. And 
once you are, are uh, happy with, uh, once you're maybe done uh, your um, investigation or any cleaning that you wanted to do at the stage, you can go ahead and reset this filter to view all your rows and records again. Hey Tess, can I jump in? Um, you'll be sharing your slides, right? With everyone so that they'll know how to do all the steps. You're yes. um, be able to look back and, and, and go through it more slowly with the slides if they need to. Yes, you will. And I apologize, I managed to close the slides. Um, but uh, yes, everybody will be receiving a copy of the slides. This is sessions also being recorded and gonna be posted on YouTube. And the slides themselves uh, have screenshots of each step as well as explanations on how to do each step. I'll just briefly show you, for example, currently we're covering facets and filters. And so this goes through step-by-step step where to find each uh, topic we're covering as well as instructions on how to do each step as well. All right. Does any, are there any other questions or uh, I can also slow down a little bit. All right. Okay, so I think, I think we're good. Um, you can also use uh, a filter to look for a portion of text so uh, for, for example, if we go into title and use a text filter, we can find all the articles that mention cancer in their title. And there we found three matching rows. And just as with, and we can easily see from our facet up above that they're all from the same publisher. And uh, just as with the text facet for filters, there's also a reset link to clear that and reset uh, all our facets and filters as well. And you do have the option if you are using multiple facets and filters and just want to get back to the beginning to reset all or remove all as well. Just I want also wanted to point out that uh, text facets are not the only facets available. There's also a number of other ones available from numeric facets, timeline facets, scatter plots, and uh, a custom facet. So being able to facet by blank, for example. But we are not gonna be uh, covering those today because I, I wanted to show you how you can also edit data through a facet as well. Because facets are a great way to be able to see perhaps if there are, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these to see if there are inconsistencies in your data that might not be apparent just on the first page. In this case though, we are, it is apparent that there is an inconsistency here on the language column. Some are using the abbreviation EN and some are using the full word English. So let's see using our facet, which is the more predominant in our data set. So in this case, uh, all of our, uh, most of the languages have been abbreviated even though uh, English is uh, spelled out for 107, there's a predominantly more that have, are using the abbreviation. So we're gonna edit the full word English to the abbreviation. So to edit a particular facet, you'll notice that when I hover over English, there's an edit link that shows up on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and then make my edit to EN and press apply, and now it has made that edit to all the cells. And I can go ahead and close this if I am done. All right, so that is facets and filters. Are there any questions? All right. Uh, if our next topic that I wanted to cover is clustering. So the cluster function groups together similar but inconsistent values in a given column and lets you merge these inconsistent values into a single value you choose. Uh, 
And this is very effective when you have data with minor variations in data value. So things like names of people, organizations, places, or classification terms, etc. So we're going to be using our split multi-valued cell function again, uh, and we're going to be doing it in the author's column as well. So if you remember uh, how we did this last time, it's under the author's column menu, edit cells, split multi-valued cells. We're going to be using the pipe again as our separator. Press OK. And now we have it split into our 4,009 rows. And I'm just going to move us back to the left here. And so now that we are split up, we can edit the individual authors' names to make sure that there are uh, that we're merging any duplications or slight variations in in authors' names. So we're going to use the clustering function. It's click the authors menu again, and then we're going to be edit cells, and then go down to cluster and edit. So these clusters are created automatically according to a number of different algorithms. And some experimentation may be required to see which clustering algor algorithm works best with any particular set of data. You may find that using a different algorithm highlights different clusters. So in this case, we are using the key collision method with the fingerprint keying function. But there are five different other keying functions that you could choose from, as well as a different method, nearest neighbor as well, and which has two uh, different uh, keying functions uh, as well. So you can uh, choose between the two to find which best works for your data. And to select the one that uh, you want to use, you could click on the uh, click on the name and it'll automatically change it and select that you want it to be merged. Uh, and then I can keep go going down, double checking, or for example, um, maybe there, this is correct, but the C should be capitalized, et cetera. You can make all these changes and direct it how you want it to merge these uh, results and values rather. Uh, and if they all look good, you can, choose to select all, and then merge selected and recluster. And so at this point, since I merged all of them, it's not going to find anything. But if I change to a different keying function, it'll find more that are possible matches that for merging. But let's say for now uh, that we are all that we've merged everything that we want to. Uh, so now we can go ahead and close. And is any, uh, if you need me to slow down, please let me know. So our, our next step is gonna be just bringing those author's names back together into a uh, multi-valued cell. So in that author's column, we're gonna go back to edit cells, join multi-valued cells, and then using the pipe again and then press OK. So now uh, we have merged some of the author's names and we have brought them all back together so that they're in the original format of our data. And there are many more functions in the menu to explore. And I just want to touch on a few so you know that they're there. So some very useful ones are under the all menu, you have the option to uh, edit columns, reorder, remove columns. So I can change, for example, if I wanted the publisher uh, earlier, I could do that and then press OK. And so now it's moved it over in my spreadsheet. You can also rename a column. So uh, for example, maybe I want to change uh, instead of all capital for DOI, I want to change it to all lowercase. So I've, I go to that menu, edit column, rename this column, 
I can change it to DOI, all small, small case. You can also sort the data. And so for this example, I'm just gonna go into publisher and then uh, sort data under sort. And then you have the option to how you would like it to be sorted, whether it's text, numbers, dates, and whether it's A to Z or Z to A, press OK. And now it has sorted your data. And uh, along with those three functions, there's also has, they have an, uh, OpenRefine has a number of built-in common transformations. So such as uh, changing titles or, or textual data from uh, uppercase to lowercase or lowercase to uppercase. Uh, and these are going to be available under, uh, if you go to edit cells, oops, common transforms. And this is where you're going to see the to title, to upper, to lowercase, or to title case. Uh, you can also trim leading and trailing white space. And I'm going to, for this example, I'm just going to use title and I'm going to change it to title case. And there you go. So we've been making our edits, uh, as we've been making our edits in Oprah Refine, uh, it's been tracking all of the edits that we've been making uh, under this undo redo tab. And this is one of the powerful features of Oprah Refine is that not only does it make it easy to edit, but it makes it also easy to track and export uh, all the data cleaning steps you have done to make your research reproducible, especially uh, particularly your, your data cleaning. So uh, from this undo redo tab, I can, uh, as it says, uh, go back to undo my work and go back to a previous uh, item and going forward. So for example, I, for, for example, I, maybe I don't want my uh, titles and title case. If I go back to this rename column uh, DOI step, I have just undone my uh, title case. But something to keep in mind is that once you are have gone back to a previous step, any steps that you do going forward are going to re overwrite um, any later steps. So for example, instead I decided instead of the title case that I actually want to change all of the titles to uh, uppercase for all of them. So I'm going to go to uppercase. So now that has changed uh, the transformation that has happened. There's, this is also where you can automate the data cleaning that you're doing as well. And what I was mentioning about uh, being able to extract and keep track of the steps that you did in your data cleaning to make it reproducible. To do that, you are gonna wanna go to extract and this is going to list uh, every step that you've done in uh, a JSON format that can be saved as a file. So to save this JSON, it's automatically selected everything. But say, for example, uh, so if I wanted to save everything, I'm going to copy that. So I can either right click copy or control C or command C if you're on Mac. And then I'm going to create a text file, just open, in this case, notepad for myself. And then I can paste that in there and then save it as a new document. But say, for example, that I have a number of uh, columns that I need to uh, change them all to uh, title case uh, or in this case, uppercase, I can reuse the JSON that from this one operation that I did on one column. So I'm going to select the text transform on cells in column title using expression value to uppercase. And using this, I can copy this JSON. Now I'm going to put it into a, my notepad uh, that I just cleared. 
And uh, JSON is very, uh, it's set up in such a way that it's, it's meant to be human readable. So uh, in particular, if I want to change which column I want this cleaning step to apply to, I just need to change the column name. So currently it's on title, but say for example, I wanted uh, to change the uh, publisher to all title case. I'm gonna go remove title and then type in publisher. And so now when I copy that, close, and then I hit apply and paste the JSON that I have from my uh, notepad. And I'm just gonna double check I have the column name correct and it is. I'm going to perform operations. And now it has changed that publisher uh, to title case as well. Now it looks more impressive when there are more uh, columns that I want to change, but that is how you do it. And yes, I see a question, a raised hand. Hi, so I'm just wondering on this whole undo redo um, tab, say I only wanted to undo step number three, but keep my work from four to 10. Can I selectively do that? Or would I just have to go back and manually change back the, the language option? Yeah, so if I wanted to do that, there's a, there's a couple of different ways, but maybe the easiest way to do that would be to uh, go in and extract and say, for example, that um, I didn't really want to reorder the columns. So I would deselect that option and then copy this uh, JSON. So I'm gonna copy it and then I'm gonna close this window, go all the way back to the creation of the project apply, and then put in that JSON that I just copied, and then perform operations. Sorry, that's all that. Um, the, um, so now you'll notice that the publisher column is no longer just after authors, it's still back in its original position, but all the other changes that I had uh, requested are still there, including uh, the making publisher all uppercase. Good question. All right. Any other questions about uh, undo redo? Okay. So I had mentioned that there is a optional coding add-on with uh, OpenRefine and I, I call it coding, uh, but it's it's coding in, in a very uh, limited sense. Um, and it, so uh, I think it's great for an introduction to coding in general. And it's through uh, OpenRefine's uh, unique language, uh, general refine expression language. So, and it can be useful for making specific transformations to uh, cells. So in this case, we're gonna do it on dates. So if you go to date, edit cells, transform, it's gonna bring up a window where you can enter uh, how you wanna change the cell, based, transform the cell based on general refined expression language or GREL. And so the expression that we're gonna be using is currently these dates are in uh, as a string or as text, but we want sometimes uh, we can use these as strings as they are, and it'll be fine, but sometimes we wanna use it as a date and being able to um, have the computer recognize it as a date format. So we're gonna change it to the date format by using value dot to date. And then we're gonna open the bracket to tell it what the format is currently for the value. And the value is, uh, day, month, year, and then I'll close that. And you'll notice it's giving us a preview of what it's going to look like in the final column. 
And then once we're happy with that, press OK. And now it has changed it to a date format. And how I can tell it's a date format is because it has changed to a green text. You can also do this type of uh, transformation to create a brand new column. So to do that, we're going to use the date again and date, edit column, add column based on this column. And it's bringing me uh, up another window where I can enter Grell again. So we're going to give our new column a name. So I'm going to call this one formatted date. And the reason I'm not putting any spaces is so that it's easier when I, uh, if I'm going to be passing this data off to a statistician or somebody who is using a different uh, coding language. So it's easier for them to work with that data. So uh, to create the new column, I'm going to do value to string. So I'm putting it back into a string format. Uh, in this case, I'm just changing how uh, it is formatted. So in this case, I want to have it as the day first, followed by the full name of the month, and then the year. And close the quotation mark and the bracket. And it's giving me the preview again, so it looks good. And then press OK. And there we have it. So I mentioned at the beginning of the session that all these changes we have made thus far have not affected our original data. So to save our changes as a new file, we need to export it. And so uh, to export, you're going to want to go to export in the top right hand corner. And there's many different options for uh, how you want to export it. I generally recommend exporting it as a comma separated value because it's a non-proprietary file format type. So it can be used by many different um, uh, pieces of software and languages to be able to process. And it's just saved into my downloads, but I can move that. And once you are done with OpenRefine altogether, you're going to want to close the browser window. But you'll notice that the, the OpenRefine command line window is still running. So to close that, uh, if you are on a PC, you're going to want to do click on the command window and then press Control C. Or if you are on a Mac, click the icon in the dock and invoke the quit command. And that brings us to the end of the demo portion of today's session. Let's bring our slides back up. If you're interested in learning more about OpenRefine, uh, there are a number of training uh, websites available, many which I've listed and linked on this slide. We are also going to be having more upcoming trainings. Uh, there's going to be an overview of library services here at UMass Chan on May 18th at 1 o'clock. Uh, and we're going to be holding a workshop on finding data on June 29th at 1 o'clock. And then we're going to be holding two uh, data visualization workshops in July. So stay tuned for those. And if you would like to uh, register for these upcoming trainings or view recordings of past seminars, I've also linked to that page as well. And just give credit where credit's due. Uh, the majority of this lesson material is from Library Carpentry's Open Refine lesson and is used under CC BY. And the background uh, and presentation slides come from Slide Carnival. If there's any questions, feel free to contact me at test.grinock at umsmed.edu. And Lisa is gonna, has put a link to the uh, workshop assessment in the chat. If you could take a couple of minutes to answer this two question form, I'd greatly appreciate it. Helps me become a better instructor. And if you have any questions right now, I'd be happy to take them. <laughs>